Today we're making some wholesome and tasty snacks. When I reach for a snack, it's usually just like a piece of fruit or some nuts, but if you're looking for something that's just a little bit more special, that's what we're gonna be making today. Three savory snacks, one sweet one. Let's just jump right in. First up, we're making these energy dense, rich and delicious orange oat bars. On a pan on medium high heat, we're gonna toast half of a cup of raw pecans for about three to five minutes. You wanna stir it often so they don't burn and then we're gonna remove it from the heat. To a food processor, add three quarters of a cup of raw almonds and blend this on high. When it achieves a flour-like consistency, we're gonna add the roasted pecans to the food processor along with two thirds of a cup of dried apricots and then blitz this again into small chunks. If you don't have a food processor at home, you can definitely skip this step. You just wanna use about half of a cup's worth of store-bought almond flour and then you can finely mince using your knife the dried apricots and the roasted pecans. To a large bowl, we're gonna add the mixture from the food processor along with one cup of old-fashioned rolled oats, the zest from one whole orange, half of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a little pinch of salt. Then we're gonna to toss everything to combine. To the same bowl, we're then gonna add one cup of 100% creamy peanut butter, half of a cup of maple syrup, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then mix it all up again. It's a pretty wet batter, but that's what makes these bars really nice and moist and dense once it's been baked. Then we're gonna transfer this mixture to a parchment lined baking dish and press it down firmly with our hands. Then we'll bake it in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the top is lightly golden. Then we're gonna let it cool completely before we remove it from the dish. Meanwhile, we're gonna melt half of a cup of dairy-free dark chocolate, either over the stove or in a bowl in the microwave. Keep the temperature on medium low so the chocolate doesn't burn. And when it's nearly fully melted, we can remove it from the heat and keep stirring. The remaining heat from the pot itself is gonna to continue to melt the last bits of chocolate. When the chocolate is cooled just a little bit, we're then gonna drizzle it over the top of the bars, creating a little zigzag pattern. For extra garnish and flavor and presentation, I'm also adding on top just a little bit more zest of an orange. And then we're gonna sprinkle on a bit of sea salt if you'd like, and then you can cut into it. You can make eight squares or about 10 bars. It is an incredibly flavorful and rich snack. It's definitely gonna keep you full and satisfied to keep you powering through your day. It's also a really easy snack to make ahead of time and take with you if you're on the go. Next up, we're making an intensely flavorful double tomato bruschetta. We're gonna start out by cutting a cup and a half's worth of cherry tomatoes into quarters. You could of course use any tomatoes you have on hand for this though. And then we're gonna add this to a bowl along with two cloves of finely minced garlic, a quarter of a cup of sun-dried tomatoes that we're gonna chop up into little bits, along with one teaspoon of the oil from the jar of the sun-dried tomatoes. Alternatively, you could use olive oil here if you'd prefer. Next, we're gonna coarsely chop one tablespoon of capers, add this to the bowl, and then we're gonna add as well one teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and some freshly ground black pepper. Finally, using about half of a cup of fresh basil leaves, we're gonna finely slice it and add this to the bowl as well. Then give it all a mix and set it aside to allow the flavors to melt for a few minutes. While the bruschetta is resting, we're gonna make the balsamic reduction by pouring half of a cup of balsamic vinegar into a small saucepan, and then we're gonna bring it to a boil over high heat. You're gonna to wanna to boil it until it's reduced in volume by about a quarter, which is gonna take about five minutes. This step is definitely optional, especially because it does make your house smell a lot like balsamic vinegar. I love vinegar, so I don't mind this at all. But if you do wanna skip it, you can just add one or two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar straight to your bruschetta, and then you can skip the reduction step. When the bruschetta has reduced largely in volume, you're gonna remove it from the heat and let it cool off a little bit. Next, we're gonna slice up some French bread. Here I'm using a bit of oil from the jar of sun-dried tomatoes. It's naturally got a little bit of tomato flavor to it, which is lovely. We're gonna brush that over the slices of bread and then I toasted it face down on a pan until it got nice and toasted and golden and crispy. When that's done, you're ready to serve and enjoy. You're gonna to top the toasted bread with your flavorful herb and garlic double tomato mixture. And then you can drizzle on just a little bit of that balsamic reduction. It is very strong and intense in flavor because it was reduced, but I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite snacks, but it also works really well as an appetizer or dip if you're hosting or have any company over. For the next recipe, we're making some protein packed roasted edamame chips made two different ways. 
For this, I'm using two cups of frozen shelled edamame. We're gonna add it to a bowl and pour over some boiling water just to thaw it out a little bit. After a couple minutes, we're gonna drain it and add about half of it or about one cup's worth to a bowl. Sprinkle over top about one and a half teaspoons of curry powder and then toss it to coat. Then we're gonna transfer it to a parchment lined baking dish and spread it out so that they crispen up more nicely. For the next version, we're gonna be flavoring our edamame with this store-bought chipotle sauce, but we've also made it before using sriracha, and that's also really yummy. So just use whatever sauce or hot sauce you have on hand that you know you enjoy. To a bowl, we're gonna add two teaspoons of miso paste, one teaspoon of the chipotle sauce or hot sauce, and two teaspoons of maple syrup. Then using a fork, we're gonna mash it all together until you get an even consistency. Then we're gonna to add to the bowl the other half or one cup's worth of the edamame. We're gonna to stir to coat all the edamame pieces in the sauce, and then we're gonna transfer this to the baking dish as well. Once you've spread it all out evenly, we're gonna pop it in the oven to bake at 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius for about 30 to 35 minutes. You'll wanna to stop to give it a stir at least once at the halfway point, and when it's totally finished, you can remove it from the oven and let it cool before you serve it to enjoy. It's a delicious and nutritious snack that you can enjoy right away, or you can pack it up in an airtight container to enjoy for up to three days. It's a yummy after workout, high protein snack, or you can just enjoy it between study or work breaks. For the final recipe, we're making some crispy oven roasted sweet potato fries with two super delicious dips. We're gonna begin by peeling two to three medium sweet potatoes and then cut those potatoes into thin little slices. Do your best to cut each into a similar thickness as the others just so it cooks evenly in the oven. We're then gonna dunk these cut potatoes into a bowl of cold water and this is gonna to help to remove some of the starch from the potatoes that helps it to crispen up more when it's baking. Once it's soaked for about five to 10 minutes, we're gonna drain off the water and transfer everything to a clean kitchen cloth. Using that cloth, you're gonna dry the potatoes as well as you can. Then we're gonna transfer everything over to a parchment-lined baking dish. We'll begin by coating the sweet potatoes in about two teaspoons of arrowroot starch. You can also use cornstarch or flour, and this is optional, but it's just one of the other things that helps to crispen up these sweet potatoes. So just get in there with your fingers, coating each one evenly in the starch. Then we're gonna drizzle over about two teaspoons of vegetable oil and all the spices. A teaspoon of dried oregano, one teaspoon of onion powder, half of a teaspoon of paprika powder, and half of a teaspoon of salt. Then get in there with your hands and toss everything to coat. So we've divided the sweet potatoes over two different baking pans, and then you're gonna to wanna to spread them apart as much as possible. You don't wanna crowd them all into one place. The more spread apart they are, the more they're gonna crispen up in the oven. We're then gonna pop these in the oven at 425 Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius to bake for about 20 minutes. Then you can remove it from the oven and give it a gentle flip before putting it back in the oven to cook for another 15 to 25 minutes, depending on how thin you cut your potatoes. While the potatoes are cooking, we're gonna make the two dips. First up is the sweet mustard dip. To a small bowl, we're gonna add three tablespoons of vegan mayonnaise along with one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, one teaspoon of maple syrup, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Then you're gonna mix it to combine. On to making the creamy avocado dip. For this, we're gonna need a small food processor. We'll add to it one ripe avocado, two cloves of garlic, a quarter of a cup of plant-based yogurt, half of a lime that we're gonna juice in there, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and a little bit of black pepper. Then we're gonna blitz this all up until it's nice and creamy, and then we're gonna add it to a small bowl. When the potatoes have become lightly golden and crispy, we're gonna remove it from the oven and let it cool just a little bit. It's gonna to continue to crispen up as it cools. Then you can transfer it all to a plate. Here we're topping it with a little bit of fresh cilantro just for garnish, and then it's ready to be enjoyed. Baked sweet potatoes, in my opinion, aren't just an accompanying side dish for burgers. I think it makes for a really wholesome and delicious snack too. You can dunk the sweet potatoes in whichever dip you chose to make. I always say that food is a carrying device for sauces, so this one's delicious. Bon appétit. I think that's all for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed and happy snacking. If you want to check out the full breakdown to any of the recipes, those links are in the description box. We always provide both metric and imperial units of measure for our recipes on the blog posts. And if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps to support the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Pickle Plimes signing off. We'll see you in the next video. I don't know why I keep throwing out the peace sign when I do it.